How we doing? It's your boy Bri. We're coming back at you and we've got some update and some progress. Can you say progress, people? We got progress and uh, here's the situation, people. We're not going to let these codes officers and that song keeps running through my head. I fought the law and the law won, but the other part that makes me change it in my mind is I fought the law and I won, if you know what I mean. Let's take a look at the situation we have at hand. We have a welder, we have a plasma cutter, we have a chop saw, and we have some metal that we bought at, how do we put this, at the bargain eddy prices and not the long limousine dollar prices, people. You do not want to start a project and get into a situation where you've got to pay the long limousine dollar because that makes the whole situation, how do I put this, feel like a round instead of a square, if you know what I mean. Let's take a look at what we have, people. So as you see, um, you see the tongue here, people, and you're saying to yourself, wow, that's a lot smaller than what I remember. Yeah, well, what I did, people, is I shortened this thing by half the length, okay, and half the uh, height. Let's come over here and let's take a look at what we've got. As you see, the sun's going down. I've been out all day. We do have the mighty, uh, what is it, the Prime Weld Plasma Cutter. I cannot say nothing bad about this machine. Uh, I believe I paid $139 or $149 for that before uh, Joe Biden took office. Now I think they're $655. I don't know. Um, but here's the deal. Take a look at this. As you see... I chopped this down, people. Look how tall this, this uh, trailer front end was. This is for hauling a double wide trailer, people. We don't need nothing that significant, if you know what I'm saying. As you can see, I'll bring you down with the live action and we'll take a look at the situation. Look at how laser sharp the plasma cutter cuts that steel. Now that is about a quarter of an inch, uh, maybe just shy, maybe 3 sixteenths. But it cut it with no problem. As you see, there's a plenty of uh, plates here. I've got to remove this plate and the other one. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that in a minute. But that's the piece, as you can see it. I believe they're 12 inches high, and I took 6 inches of it. And after I got measuring it, I said, I don't need uh, 8 feet wide. You know what I'm saying? I, my tongue would be way out here. Where are we at? Way out here. And I don't need to be way out there. I need, when I'm backing this trailer up, I need to be a little bit closer, people. Because the longer you make it, the more leverage that you're putting on the tongue, if you know what I'm saying. So what I've got here is I said to myself, it may be strong enough the way it is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another beam on top. And as you can see, I added another beam. Okay, so we have a double beam here. I beefed up the welds that were uh, on the actual plates from the tongue. I beefed them up. And as I cut the beam, people, what I did was I took some metal and I placed some square stock underneath and I stitched it all along so that the beam has structural integrity. Um, now as you see, I did not leave the center beam out. I did the same thing there. We made a structural integrity situation that says we've got a scenario with a huge, mighty, mighty strong coupler on it, a 2 and 5 sixteenths. We stitched it on both sides, inner and outer. Um, we do have to come in here with some gussets. I'm going to put some gussets right here on either side, and it will be pretty much finished. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some plates. And as you can see it, I'm going to put a plate right here. I'm going to put a plate right here. And I'm going to put a plate on the other side. And we'll be pretty much done with this project, people. We'll be able to get on with the axles. And as you see the axles in the background with the mighty American flag, um, we're going to be able to get a situation that says the codes officer is going to be mighty, mighty surprised when he sees that the, the guy from Kelly Road didn't play around. He didn't play around and he didn't uh, hesitate. He didn't procrastinate. Because as we know, procrastination always robs you. There was a situation on this truck right here. 
it was in Oklahoma and this was a hot item at the time and I said I'm not gonna procrastinate I flew right down to Tulsa and grabbed that truck there was a situation on this uh, excavator right here uh, the guy was he had them on sale for a short period of time and they were gonna go back they were gonna go up the prices were going up and sure enough after I bought mine uh, what happened was that ship hit the hit the uh, bridge and it shut everything down and all the prices of everything went up um, I didn't procrastinate is that, that's my point um, when I had an opportunity to buy this trailer just the bottom I didn't procrastinate I just went and got it um, when I had an opportunity to build the top of it I didn't say well let me sit down and watch this, uh, the football game I went outside and I got something done people um, how do I put this you're not going to ever get anything in life if you don't get out there and get it done no one's gonna do it for you it's called work ethic people but what we're getting at is a situation that says the sun's going down. I've been out here all day, and I'm going to be out here until the sun goes completely to bed. Because if you didn't know, that's my motto. I wake the uh, sunshine up in the morning, and I slap her square on the rear end and put her to bed at night. But let's take a look at the scenario with this uh, Connex box. I've got it jacked up. I've got it on some temporary uh, wood. And... As you can see, I've got quite a bit of stuff in here. So I may need to unload some of this. But uh, these pieces right here, people, I'll tell you what, these are amazing. Um, and if you need a set of these, you you just got to holler at your boy. And I'll definitely help you out. But uh, we've just got to mount that up when we're done. Go to Harbor Freight and purchase us a jack. But what I want you to see is how big originally how big these front tongues are these come off of a house trailer look at the size of that thing and if you can uh, see up front what I did is I 86 all this here and I only kept the part that has the front the front triangle basically and then I even that I cut that in half now say to yourself well man that's that looks like a lot of work it is but it's always easier when you have tools when you have a plasma cutter and you have a welder and you have horse sense to get something done the situation is not that bad now I live in an area where there's really not a whole lot of people around me but this code officer I see him drive by today and uh, to his chagrin I'm sure he's gonna be surprised when he sees them trailer axles tomorrow up underneath that that connex and that tongue sitting on there because I'm certainly going to call him and I'm going to say come on over to the compound I'll give you a day pass and you can come take a look at the situation uh, and put me on a, a path to uh, beat the law if you will because the attorney said from the city of where that I live in the attorney said as long as they're on uh, axles and they have a tongue for them uh, basically there's nothing we can do so what we're doing is we're trying to uh, quell that situation because the storage capacity of those are really amazing you can put stuff in there not, no rodents get in there it's really a nice scenario and actually you know what I gotta actually thank them because I got doing some research on them and how do I put it the uh, you really don't want them right on the ground you want to have some airflow underneath them so you know what it's gonna work out but uh, the other thing I want to show you it's kind of dark, but let me see if I can show you. Uh, last night I was sitting around in the garage and I said to myself, you know, I'm getting sick and tired of this thing being in the way. You know, it's an amazing tool. The sandblast box is an amazing tool, but it's a pain in the rear end to move around. So what I did was I had a set of training wheels off an old bike downstairs and I put them on this end. And then on this end, what I did was I... It was raining, so I said, let me just work in the shop. And I'm, I'm just showing you what I got here. This is just a square piece of flat stock. Okay, I took some old scrap angles off of a piece of uh, metal. You can see that they're, they're right here, these little angles. I welded them in so it's kind of like a 90 degree wall. And then all I did was use tech screws to screw them in from the side. Now this is very thin wall, people. This is very thin wall, but it's a cabinet, and it's uh, these are rollers, 
and I can move it around and it has brakes on them people they have a brake where you can lock it okay so this is gonna make the situation a little easier for me to be able to roll this out and when I need to sandblast something I'll be able to uh, hook it up and get on down the road with it but uh, but that's the scenario and that's the deal people what I've been doing is blocking my driveway off um, these Amazon guys think they can just roll up in your driveway at 90 miles an hour and uh, what I'm doing is I'm putting a thing there saying hey you are gonna have to get out on the road if you want to go 90 you can go on the, on the road and you can risk your life out on the on the uh, on the highway because you're not gonna pull in my driveway that fast I had one the other day and what I was doing is I was working underneath uh, my trailer and what happened was I'm underneath there grinding something this lady comes up like a bat out of hell in the driveway and comes up and slams on the brakes I thought she was gonna hit the trailer and uh, I jump up out, out from underneath the trailer and she's uh, of course she's walking around like she knows she don't have no clue what's going on and they're, they always look around and let me say this I like Amazon don't get me wrong but they got these private contractors and what they do is they walk up to your house and they're doing this as they're walking up to the porch they're looking around and, and I understand that they're trying to see what's going on at the compound but what I don't like is when they're eyeballing your equipment and eyeballing inside your garage or you walk up from around back and you've got to constantly keep the garage door shut because they think they have an open uh, an open invitation to walk in your garage and in your shop and what they don't realize is I have a lot of weapons in my garage I have a lot of weapons and firearms and stuff laying around and I don't want them uh, how do I put this being like a Democrat and thinking that they're gonna do something wild if you know what I mean because your boy supports Trump and uh, I support law and order and I support a situation that says basically we're not gonna put up with this no more in America and uh, we've been fed up we are fed up we've got a couple months away before we can change the situation back and uh, this is not a political rant this is about the tongue on my trailer but I have to say it because it, it affects everybody people the cost of living is going up and been up since the uh, the two people in office Camilla and uh, Joe been in office and uh, you know you can tune out you can shut get off the page if you don't want to hear this but it's the reality it's the reality that says uh, what is the deal people with this kind of situation but uh, the last thing I want to show you is uh, these steps over here if you want to stick around this is a little bonus now what I did until I can build the railings is I just temporarily brace these like this because there's nothing worse than a loose railing but uh, there's the steps they turned out really really nice and they're sturdy you can see how strong they are and what I did was I actually went in here and I routed all these around the edges and uh, it's good wood it's smooth wood and it's my wood but uh, just wanted to give you an update on the steps I see the uh, it was a FedEx guy or one of them today he walked up and he said wow these are much stronger and so they're recognizing the situation that uh, when you make improvements to your porch you don't realize how many people are coming up your steps that are gonna notice that but uh, this is your boy Bry we're out here we're trying to get this uh, this tongue done and when it's all done I'm gonna be happy I'm gonna actually uh, celebrate I'm gonna I'm gonna get a couple uh, sarsaparilla sit back and around a campfire and I'm gonna say hey this is what you do when you celebrate and you you beat the law and you won you know what I mean you beat the law you found a loophole so to speak and that's the situation we've got to do in this country we need to find a loophole around the, the round deal if you know what I mean because we've been getting around for at least four years now and we need a square deal people we need a square deal that says the working man needs uh, to not be forgotten anymore you know because we're out here working and we're making the whole ball of wax go around and that's the money that they're grabbing and taxing other people that are out here producing this doesn't come out of thin air you know they want to say now let me just say this they want to talk about let's tax the millionaires and billionaires Do you know how ignorant that is to say that and you might say well they've got more and you're, and you're, you're jealous because someone's got more than you 
You might say, well, they need to pay their fair share. Well, what is their fair share? They're a human being just like you. Just because they've done better than you in life, they should have to pay more? They only get the same amount of oxygen on the earth as you. Why should they pay more in taxes? It should be a flat tax. Everybody should have a, a, a horse in the game. If it's 10%, 20%, whatever it is, you, everybody should pay that. Because what you don't understand is the government in and of itself does not create any wealth. It just takes wealth and redistribute it to the people that they think need it. Okay, And I'm not against anybody getting uh, any kind of assistance if they need it. But it's not a lifestyle. You're supposed to uh, dig down deep inside yourself and say, I want to do better and become better. Uh, for myself and for my own mental health, not to uh, sit back and feel like everybody else owes you something. They don't owe you nothing. They don't even know you. They don't owe you anything. But uh, at the end of the day, if you taxed all the millionaires and billionaires and took all their money and just confiscated it, it still wouldn't pay for what we're uh, what we're giving away. So that is a uh, it's it's a, an emotional plea to the people that are uneducated to say let's tax the millionaires and billionaires because they're sitting around and they got their thumb up their ass and they're not doing nothing and they're thinking that everybody else has got some kind of a, uh, how do I put this, they think that everybody else that has succeeded has got some kind of a, uh, uh, an easy path in life. No, they work their butt off. They work their, uh, their nails to the bone, so to speak. These are people that get up early in the morning. They don't sleep in. They don't play video games all day. They get up and they go produce so that the government reaches in their pocket and takes out that long limousine dollar and says, there, that's, your, that's what you owe us. And at the end of the day, it's really not fair. But we're not going to sit here and cry about that. What I'm trying to say is, you need to look at your life. You only get so many years on this earth. And stop being a little crybaby. Let me turn that light back on. And thinking that just because someone is a millionaire or a billionaire, maybe they spend their money different than you do. Maybe they don't go out and buy the stupid things that you buy, maybe. Maybe they don't uh, waste their money on cigarettes or booze. Maybe that's the scenario. But, uh, you know, this is not to uh, jack anybody's ass, but it's to say, hey, you know, look at what they're doing. They're trying to tax millionaires and billionaires. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to move their money somewhere else. When millionaires and billionaires have money, they invest it, and that creates jobs for people that don't have money. So anyway, that's the scenario. Let's take one last look at the tongue, okay? We've got the Hobart 190 handler. Uh, it's an amazing uh, machine. As you see, I've got the Home Depot fan, and it keeps all the, uh, how do I say, dust off you. But the Hobart is a scenario that says if you need to burn in some welds and you need to spend hours doing it, it will get you on down the highway. But that's the tongue, people. We're really, really happy with it. And uh, this is your boy, Bry. And you know, I got to get on down the road.